Hello beautiful YouTube world, Taylor Hoffinger here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today's video, I am going to be sharing with you guys, I believe I have seven brand new fragrances here that I have never smelled before and they have been on my to smell list for months now. Now I have to admit, a YouTuber here, her name is Jute de Rose. She reviews a ton of fragrances on her channel. She came out with a video stating all of her most wearable, most used fragrances, and I was like, sign me up. I need to get my nose on all of the fragrances or majority of the fragrances that she mentioned because her and my styles tend to be pretty similar. I do really, really enjoy warm floral scents. When she came out with that video, I knew I had to get my nose on every single scent. So without any further ado, let's get into this video talking about seven brand new fragrances that I have never smelled before, as well as my first impressions of them. So I have my beautiful little package here, and just a little side note, if you're looking for sample sizes of full-size perfumes, or tester vial sizes, I highly recommend Etsy, eBay, or Mercari. Those tend to be the majority of the fragrance uh, websites that I find all of these testers on. So we are going to start with Armani Privé's Rouge Malachite. I have been dying to smell this scent for a really, really long time. It is a white floral amber tuberose. For top notes, we have tuberose, pink pepper, clary sage, Middle notes, we have tuberose, jasmine, sambac, ylang ylang, which I love ylang ylang, benzoin, cashmere, and orange blossom. Base notes are tuberose and amber. Wow. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. You can tell that this perfume is very expensive. It's very well formulated. It does seem like it's in a collection or a range of perfumes that are higher end or more elevated. This doesn't seem like your typical run-of-the-mill uh, designer type of scent. It's super wearable. Like, it could go sexy date night, but it could also be daytime, spring, summer. Bursting with a ton of white florals. Honestly, the tuberose in there doesn't bug me too, too much. It's also got this beautiful sweetness to it, though. This approachability to where it's not your grandmother's doilies and a bunch of white florals just popped into a fragrance bottle. It's got that cashmere in, that benzoin, that vanillic creaminess to it. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. I cannot find one thing that's wrong or too sharp or too sweet about this fragrance. It's so well blended. To me, this is just a creamy white floral that's opulent and elegant and very, very high end. So next up, we are going to do In Paradise Riviera by Ex Nihilo. So this is a musky floral, white floral, fresh scent. In the top, you have bergamot. Middle, you have peony, tiara flower, and again, tuberose. In the base, you have musk and cashmere in. So a little similar maybe to Rouge Malachite with that cashmere in and the tuberose, but let's give this a try. Wow, clean and fresh du jour. This is so, so clean, so fresh, like fresh out of the shower clean. Upon first spritz, it almost reminded me of the clean, fresh, soapy roseness of the Chloe perfume, just the Chloe EDP, but now that it's drying down, it's getting a little bit more complex and exotic. This is bright and zippy, almost. It's got like a citrusy bergamot zip to it. It's zesty, but it's got that cozy, warm, cashmere and musky floral component to it, but it's got that citrus zip. It's really invigorating. This kind of wakes you up. It is a bit tropical as well. I'm not sure if I see this as an everyday. Just because that tiare flower makes it tropical and exotic, you could do this every day if that's your style or your vibe, or definitely in Florida, I feel like I could get away with this type of tropical, fresh, soapy scent day to day. The next fragrance we have is Glossier You. Definitely a very, very popular scent, especially here on YouTube. So this is a powdery, musky iris, and the notes are pretty simple. It's just musk, powdery notes, and iris. So let's see, sometimes those purple florals for me can go one of two ways. They can either get too sour, too sharp, or I can really enjoy them. Mmm. Soft, delicate, clean, powdery, almost like a, a makeup powder compact, 
but this is more youthful. This is more a younger generation, maybe the millennial generation would really, really enjoy this with that millennial pink frosted bottle. It's definitely nowhere near, you know, Ex Nihilo or Armani Privé for sure. It's simpler, it's less complex. You understand the notes more, it's just straightforward kind of powdery iris. Clean, fresh, powdery, makeup compact, approachable, youthful, wear every day, day to night, can't go wrong, easy grab and go. Next up we have Scurzo by Miller Harris. This is a sweet oud rose scent. In the top notes you have tangerine and artemisia. That's unique. Middle notes you have rose, oblanum, pitsporum, narcissus. Base notes you have agarwood or oud. Sweet notes, patchouli and vanilla. Upon first initial sniff, it definitely is giving me Tom Ford's Rose Prick, that fresh, spicy rose. Might be a little too oody spicy for me. I really do appreciate that creamy, elegant, floral, feminine rose in there, but that oud is sharp. It's definitely sharp, but it's beautiful. Just this may not be necessarily for me. Because Tom Ford Rose Prick was the exact same thing. It really lured me in with that beautiful rose because honestly, can you really go wrong with rose in a fragrance? But that spiciness, that fresh green spiciness in there really kind of took the perfume down an avenue that I wasn't looking to enjoy or explore. Yeah, and it's not really drying down any less spicy. Sometimes that spice kind of takes a back seat a little bit and dries down to something creamy and well-balanced, but I can see the allure though. This is very sexy, beautiful, exotic almost, deep, a deep rose, obviously not your average soapy rose. Wow, so far definitely not my favorite on the list that I've tried, at least just for me and my personal tastes, but it's beautiful. So next up we have BDK's Bouquet de Hongrie, and I really think just judging by the notes, I'm probably gonna end up loving this. So it's a fruity, sweet, rose musky scent. In the top you have pear, strawberry, cassis, middle notes, Turkish rose, jasmine, sambac, and Lorinox. In the base notes you have musk, amber, cedar. So a lot of these fragrances definitely do have that muskiness to it, which I enjoy. Gotta let it dry down because I'm not gonna lie, on first initial smell of it in the air and on the blotter card, it smells dated. So I read a few reviews of this saying that it's very similar to Chanel Eau Tendre, and I definitely get that, that clean, fresh, soapy, floral type of scent fresh out of the shower, like you've been washing yourself with just a bunch of, bunch of uh, soapy, sudsy bubbles in the shower. Not really what I was thinking or what I was hoping for, if I'm being honest. I love cassis. I love fruits like pear and strawberry. You can smell that bright burst of fruitiness when you first sniff it, which is wonderful. And then it kind of dries down a little bit more to a true, true floral, like a ton of flowers in here. The Turkish Rose, the Jasmine Sambach, and then you get a little bit of that amber. I'm definitely getting like an amber floral with a fruity opening. So far I'm a little bit shocked. I thought this was just going to be a little bit more of a floral forward scent, like just a burst of a bunch of like soapy beautiful flowers, and it's a little bit more green than I think I thought it would be. Next up we have Levant by Ormond James. A lot of people rave about this fragrance, so there's a lot of hype here. We'll see how I like it. I love the bottle though. The bottle is absolutely beautiful. Reminds me of a bit of an old school Escada perfume bottle, Miami Blossom, if you guys remember. It is a citrus white floral floral scent. In the top you have tangelo, mandarin orange, bergamot, and rose. Already I'm in love with that. I love orange and bergamot and rose in a fragrance. In the middle you have orange blossom, peony, lily of the valley, and jasmine. In the base you have musk, cedar, and amber. A lot of base notes in these fragrances with musk, cedar, and amber, which I can't complain because I love fragrances like that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wow lives up to the hype. Oh my goodness. It is so citrusy. It's almost like you're doing laundry in the Amalfi Coast in Italy. So in the, in the Amalfi Coast in Italy, there's a lot of fresh citrus, a lot of fresh lemons and oranges in the cooking and just the overall cuisine. You can almost smell like fresh oranges or fresh 
lemons on the vine when you're out there and this smells like you're doing laundry in Italy or you, you walk past a laundry line, a clothesline of clean, fresh sheets that have a ton of beautiful citrus fabric softener on them or have been washed with just like fresh citrus juices. Unbelievable. It doesn't smell too loud. I honestly feel like the sillage of this is going to be really delicate and elegant. It's not something like Rouge Malachite where it almost like punches you with just like a punch of beautiful fragrance. This is delicate, this is soft. It's demure, it's very demure. She's not loud, she's not in your face, she's elegant, she's classy, she lives in the Amalfi Coast, she's doing laundry, putting laundry on the laundry line, but when she walks past, you know that she is elegant and has really good taste. So the final fragrance, one of the sweet little Etsy sellers that I bought one of the samples from included this, so I wasn't initially going to review it. It ended up working out wonderfully just because Juda Rose did include the Narciso Rodriguez, I think, musk for her in her fragrance video, but this is the Musk Noir Rose for her by Narciso Rodriguez. This is a musky, fruity, vanilla sweet scent. Top notes are plum, pink pepper, bergamot, middle notes are musk, rose, and tuberose, and the base is vanilla. Hmm, this is very sweet, very floral, very feminine. The bottle is just so sexy and so beautiful. That deep pink juice with the black cap. This is so sweet and rosy and sexy. You don't want to stop smelling it. You almost want to take a bite of the person wearing it. I hope that doesn't sound bad. Divine, divine sweetness. This is the sweetest one in the entire collection. It may be that plum coming through. It's making my mouth water, is that weird? This isn't very wearable though to me, unfortunately. This is kind of like sexy date night, almost like a date to a museum or an opera, something creative. This is a fun lady. A fun lady would wear this that doesn't take herself too seriously. This seems like long term it would be a headache inducer because as I'm kind of sitting here I'm getting a little bit of a headache smelling this. So I'm not going to put this on my skin but it is so beautiful. I definitely want to smell more of the Narciso line. Now that I'm revisiting the Armani Privé Rouge Malachite, it's got this saltiness to it. Almost like a tropical saltiness. It's so beautiful. My goodness, it smells like the other one. Blue Turquoise, I think it's called. It smells a little similar, but Blue Turquoise was much more green and salty. This is, I definitely enjoy this one a lot better. The Ex Nihilo, now that I'm revisiting, is so soft. Has the vibe a little bit of Chloe Oda Parfum. A little bit but like almost like the exotic tropical sister with the tiara in there. Yeah, this has the tropical element to it, but it's definitely less offensive than Erin's Hibiscus Palm. So if you're looking for that type of vibe, something soapier, fresher with the exotic florals in there, try this one. Revisiting Glossier U, it's definitely dried down to be not as linear as it was in the beginning. So powdery. It's just a powdery iris, like a soft makeup compact. Okay, revisiting Scurzo by Miller Harris. Yeah, still so sharp and green and spicy, like pepper, pepper, pepper. My goodness. Oh, so oody, so spicy. This is not for me. Okay, revisiting BDK's Bouquet de Hungry. So it's dried down even cleaner, soapier, and fresher than it was before. You get some florals in there, but I feel like it's not a ton. Really unique, smells like a green, fresh, slightly floral shampoo. Okay, revisiting Ormond Jane Levant. I'm almost like, <laughs> do I say this? I'm almost pissed this smells so good. Delicate, citrus, elegance, close to flawless that fragrance is. Revisiting the Narciso Rodriguez Musk Noir Rose. Yeah, this is not for me too sweet. Too, too sweet. So I think I've got my top two favorites here, the Ex Nihilo and Paradise Riviera, as well as the Ormond Jane Levant. They are beautiful. Honestly, all of the fragrances here, you really can't go wrong. I will be posting a lot of these tester vials, sample size sprays on my Mercari page. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these, definitely head over there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, the seven new fragrances that I have been dying to get my nose on, and I'm very, very impressed. 
Thank you, Jus de Rose, for the inspiration on this video and for bringing these fragrances to my attention. I highly appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys!